May I speak and may you hear in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The writings of our spiritual forebearers record special callings of following God. There are several call stories in the Gospels, including the call of Matthew in today's Gospel story. So it seems that Matthew was a tax collector for the Roman occupation government, making him in the eyes of the Hebrews a cross between a traitor and a gangster. For some unexplained reason, Jesus goes to this irreligious, greedy defector to the occupation government and says, follow me. What are we missing here? Does Matthew have some hidden spiritual aptitude? Does he have latent leadership qualities that could be used for the glory of God? Well, we just don't know. The text doesn't say, and we are left hanging. Or are we? You become a disciple of Jesus only on the basis of a call, not because you decide to put yourself forward and at God's disposal. You do not choose me, but I chose you, Jesus tells his disciples. And this is independent of personal qualifications and age or moral fiber. The initiative for a call always lies with Jesus. No one in the Gospels became a disciple of Jesus by volunteering. So how did Jesus get followers? What are the conditions for discipleship? What does the Lord require of would-be followers? Simply this, that they be ready to say yes when Jesus says, follow me, without qualification. Jesus demands an unconditional and immediate response, no hesitation. It's that simple, that uncomplicated. Simone Weil, the Jewish philosopher and follower of Christ, once said, we possess nothing in this world other than our ability to respond, to say yes. In discipleship, to answer the spirit-generated yearning to follow Jesus with the, power to, uh, with the power we do possess is only the power in us to step forward, to say, I will, I am, I do. Chosenness followed by our response that's the formula of discipleship that Jesus offers us. Matthew stands as just one of the millions over the last two millennia flawed, fallen beings who have risen to their feet at the call of Jesus. Not because they are necessarily good or especially gifted, but simply because they have been called by Jesus Matthew, this rather indecent lout, stands an example for the church. The unlikely disciple who nevertheless yields to the call with the power of saying simply, yes. It's a decision all disciples have to make yet one that can't be forced or foisted upon anyone. It can't be inherited or manipulated, but it can and should be reaffirmed day by day. 
each day, each and every day, we are invited to stand up with Matthew and set out as disciples of Jesus. Our work is to offer ourselves wholeheartedly to the unseen Lord, to follow in trust the leading of God, and then to marvel as the wind of the Spirit blows the power of our simple response into opportunities to serve beyond our natural abilities. As we respond to the call, we become reflections of God's purpose in the world. The remaining words in our gospel story this morning give more shape to God's purpose. Matthew is barely enrolled in the 12 when he is immersed in his on-the-job training. Jesus calls him into his mission and purpose and then demonstrates for him the depth of this ministry. Jesus heals the sick and raises the dead. The personal purpose and call of every Christian is to express Christ to the world. The secret of life, in whatever way it happens to be fleshed out according to our own uniqueness, is first to lay claim to this sacred responsibility. When this purpose does gain sway over us, and when we use it as a lens through which to see the totality of life, then everything we do takes on a devotion and a dynamism. When our personal purpose is neither hidden nor dormant, it is the radiating center out of which our spiritual life proceeds. <clears throat> when the spiritual life is neither theory nor philosophy, it is something personal and passionate. You are possessed by the fire of Jesus and you become a flame bearer, maybe even a flame thrower in our world. To be a disciple of Jesus Christ, living the faith that we possess and profess is a high calling that Jesus extends to all of us. To regard such a call as the overarching purpose of life gives remarkable and graceful purpose to our lives. And that, my sisters and brothers, is what answering the call of Jesus Christ means. We are meant to be pouring the energy and life of Jesus into the world by bringing out of death and restoring things out of brokenness. When Matthew said to Jesus, yes, he gave us a pattern, a pattern for our lives. We are blessed. All of us are blessed. And with God's grace, our call is to extend that blessing to the whole world. Amen.